Hello, real hi-fi help. Yes, again here to please the people to help them choose what exactly is going to make your system magical. And uh, this is a consideration I've had for many, many years. And also many of my friends have, have told me this. The, the problem that we have with transistor gear generally. So just want to say there is good transistor equipment without, without a doubt. And usually the more expensive the equipment gets, of course the performance gets a lot better. But these are concerns that I have had with most transistor equipment that is being sold, used, new, and so on. And uh, these are some very interesting um, observations that I've made that I hope that you could uh, take into consideration just when when you are judging your own equipment. It could be that you have some tube equipment, transistor equipment, or are considering buying something. Listen to some of these things that I've noticed. And um, so here we go. Now, um, point one here is the look here effect wow this is new this this is better this this hollywood glanceful um effect that transistor sound generally creates where it almost cuts detail out of the sound picture and highlights it in front of you that's to some degree really cool especially when you've grown accustomed to the 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 stock boring low class tube sound then it's nice to go back to this transistor effect but generally it's it's an effect that 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 fades that um, you just somehow get get tired of because usually it isn't done at a very high level of sophistication so here on point number two is that the focus is many times on the specifications and features instead of the quality components that are used in the, for example, amplifiers that are made. And yeah, you know, features such as uh, like, look at, look at us, we've got a, f a 500 or 5,000 watt amplifier. Who cares? You know, um, it's all about power is all about how that first watt is hitting your, your speaker. Okay. If you have a thousand watts, you most likely don't have a very good high quality sound signature integration and balance compared to a lower watt amplifier. Now I know I'm over generalizing stuff when I'm, when I'm saying this, I'm just saying this is a clear tendency that we have in the industry to just think that, Oh, bigger is better, but many times it isn't. Uh, maybe many times you just get more power, you get more control instead of having a slightly better um, or much better signature. And uh, that's what I consider one of the one of the, the greatest things in, in, in music ever is the sound signature itself, the essence, the feelings, the the, the letting go of the energy. There's so much transistor equipment out there that just it just stays at at, 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 at at the same height when you listen to it. It doesn't feel like it's going behind the speaker or it's going broad. Um, it just feels like it's it's locked in, in, in a certain on, on a certain communication channel and sticking stuck in that mode. And I know a lot of tube equipment also has this problem, especially the, the lower end quality tubes where it's just stuck in that overly warm to be conservative way and just keep turning up and up the 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 volume on your amplifier and it just somehow won't fully let go and be three-dimensional and, and clear in sound tube equipment ha have this problem generally and uh, and of course it, it differs a lot depending on the uh, the quality that you've invested in so it's it's worth mentioning that so point three here is that most most transistor equipment just sounds unrealistically good uh, yeah you, you get this two-dimensional uh, effect where it's like pushed up towards you where there's no real substance and that's that's kind of cool for a short period of time and especially when you're going for the the really expensive transistor uh, equipment
I have to say that transistor gear generally has a hard time with uh, dealing with bad recordings. So, um, like I wrote here, can you listen to a random bad recording on a, on a bad piece of cheap transistor gear uh, versus a similarly priced tube amp? Uh, often you can't. Often I often find that people with transistor equipment, especially the the cheap transistor equipment, is that they use a lot of time skipping through songs, just listening to twenty seconds here, two minutes here, uh, constantly skipping, and and that's that's uh, that's a phenomenon that happens among a lot of people who who have transistor equipment and who have digital and are running uh, Wi-Fi and tidal and stuff like that you just get this like nothingness sound where people are just changing between all kinds of different uh numbers that they like to get that effect that doom 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 effect or that bell whistle like <whistles> ding and you just you just lose the overall experience of something really adding value to your life. So I've often found that if I have a decent tube amplifier and I have something like a, a vinyl system connected to that, I can often just put any record on and just listen to it from start to end without having to feel that I have to change to one track or another that I prefer a bit more, right? Because it's just this overall satisfactory nice experience you know where you feel like this is being played instead of being processed so um okay over two point four is that details are often too isolated and clean cut and sound has a, a tendency of portraying only the individual separate effects instead of the music as a whole yeah just like i said before and um top transistor gear is usually crazy good but still most times they lack a lot of excitement life integration deep emotional palette and, and like this like here i'm connecting with something you know instead of like the, the, instead of you, you're seeing in pieces of information layering uh instruments right next to each other i mean it, it's very cool with with the layering that goes on with a lot of the expensive transistor equipment don't get me wrong okay but it just often lacks a lot of uh, genuineness true character and, and when you feel like this person here is has made a recording and it's meant for you and you can fully relax you know it, you just often don't really get that with transistor and um, transistor build quality is usually less good than similarly priced tube gear. Plus the transistor circuitry is usually a lot longer compared to the tube, meaning that you have more negotiation, creating a, a sort of a digital sound DSP effect. So DSP is this, um, this room correction uh, technology, basically fake sound and uh, yeah, you, you can you can get a pretty uh, fake uh, good sound good fake sound <laughs> um, by using DSP some few times I often most DSP that, that I've heard is, is, is really bad really bad and, and, and you can hear it's an effect um, doesn't sound real but I've heard of some few people actually do this uh, properly integrated into the system where you really felt like this was convincingly good but still it, it never really felt like the best of the best ever um so point seven is that the yes the transistor gear usually at the same price is a lot more correct and clean cut um and has a more black background and similarly priced tube gear but this is also usually attained by removing a lot of natural depth three-dimensionality and ability to correctly reproduce real instruments now this is a very very important piece is that the depth of the instrument the tonality the the feel of the wood that is on the instrument that's being played 
usually is a bit vague on the transistor gear. It's usually like a plasticky two-dimensional sound. I mean, obviously when you're going for Negra and Spectral, which is like some of the best, and, and Griffin, which is some of the best transistor uh, gear out there, it obviously gets to a level where most people, even the, the true uh, tube audiophiles would say that, wow, this is ridiculously good and I would never uh, choose tubes again. So it, it, they definitely have some qualities once you get up to that level. But I would say that any normal um, amplifier, $10, $100, even $5,000 uh, of amplifier uh, equipment or DACs or CD players, the, those that price range in, in transistor gear usually is um, not very good, especially in regards to instruments and timing and depth and three-dimensionality. I generally feel that there is a sort of a, uh, of a wall you have to go through, which starts at around 8,000, yeah, I would say around uh, five, Five to ten thousand dollars. There's like a, a wall you have to go past before you start getting some proper transistor equipment. You know, some some. I wouldn't say even uh, something that comes close to the best, but just where you feel that like like here, I have something to work with that will react and uh, play play music. You know, and I feel that. Uh, five to ten thousand dollars is actually being pretty generous i mean if i had to l listen to a transistor uh, amplifier i mean i would usually have to listen to equipment that costs 20 to fifty thousand uh, dollars before i start getting um, you know really excited about it you know and um yeah like point eight says here transistor sound usually sits on the sound partly because it's being run through d or a b class watch which creates a sort of a digital lagged pc kind of sound it just just doesn't sound real and it also has to be mentioned that transistor gear usually is very thin and gray in sound and it's just very difficult listening to a bad random recording, especially with the lower transistor models. T I totally uh, agree with that. Oh, went past. Um, again, the problem with most transistor gear is that there are just too many features. Watt meters, power protection, clip protection, speaker protection, this and that sensor, built-in phone function, built-in uh, DAC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, equalizer. These things attribute to transistor generally sounding more mechanical and correct in an unnatural way compared to a more direct design. So having a motor connected to a pot meter, the thing that you regulate the volume with, so you can use a remote, usually actually, um, actually re removes a lot of naturalness in sound. A lot of people don't know this, but I would say that more than 99% of the pot meters out there in the world, they have some kind of motor directly um, applied to the volume control. And, and you can typically hear that to some degree that, that this just isn't sounding right. It just sounds wrong, you know? And, and, Typically, when you get up to something like a Macintosh amplifier, you, you hear that there is suddenly a, a big difference, you know, going from the crap equipment to something pretty decent. You start hearing that when you turn up the volume, that it still manages most of the time to maintain a fantastic separation between the instruments. There's still a lot of power and control, and uh, but still, it's, it's motor technology uh put to uh, the volume meter the gain meter whatever you call it and there ba there's basically only one company in the world doing this 100 uh, percent right in a way that 
you're getting the full natural sound and that's the audio note that I've heard of you know look at their pot meters and then compare that to a regular pot meter that you see in a normal amplifier it's just it's just 10 classes apart. I mean, even the good stuff like Negra and Spectral and stuff like that, it's not nearly as good as, as Audio Note in that one aspect. Um, well, what was it I was going to say here? So, yes, there's a big difference between a stereo receiver with all these gadgets and a similarly priced transistor amplifier with only one tenth of the amount of features. So, so yeah, that's a very good lesson is that if you are going for the best sound for the least amount of money, make sure that you have an amplifier that is only an amplifier that doesn't have all these gadgets. Make sure that it has very few parts in it. You know, if you can have less than a hundred parts in that amplifier, it's most likely going to be amazingly good. And if those parts are mostly, um, you know, pieces that, that you can touch, caps, uh, electrolytes, resistors, stuff like that, things that you can see um, instead of chips, you are usually going for a sound that is more natural. So I would definitely suggest that, uh, getting that uh, uh, particular uh, equipment and uh, everything's just basically heading towards us all having transistor equipment it being chip based and probably in 10 or 20 years it wouldn't surprise me if we if we don't have our uh, really good tube sound anymore because of the uh, the the world metals becoming just too expensive and um let's see here point through uh, 11 is that transistor gear mostly just pumps sound out it often sounds uh, unnatural and, and not fully tuned in so the whole mass of the sound is very sucked out and what is left is just the bare bones metal structure holding everything together so i often hear that when i visit friends and people where i want to buy equipment from uh, used that you just get this metallic nothingness of sound where, where you basically can hear everything but still there's nothing there because it, it just sounds irrelevant and uh, that's the thing Mo most things sound uh, irrelevant like, like I wrote here on point 12 uh, especially the low gear tube gear transistor gear most low equipment low budget equipment just sounds irrelevant like like uh why should i want to listen to this when you buy a proper piece of equipment usually starting at around yba macintosh ear jadis these type of brands then you start getting into a class of equipment where the sound becomes relevant important so you have to listen to it it just grabs your attention in a totally different kind of way so suddenly you can hear an electrical guitar being played in 10,000 different ways instead of just 10 or 100 different uh, electric guitars suddenly you can hear details like oh oh this was recording using this type of string or oh uh, the the artist used uh, some very different strings on the same guitar or uh, this is the same recording just in a slightly different room you know you start hearing stuff like that uh, compared to the the very lowest gear where you just hear like a black and white uh, okay this is a rock song this is a pop song uh, i'm not really sure what that instrument is but it's it's not really that good um so um so which one to to choose Generally, I would say that if you like to save power on running an amplifier, then yes, transistor will generally do that. But this is also why it's generally a lot more polite and negotiated in, in sound and a bit more superficial. So most lower tube gear is also very restricted and, and, and colored in sound, which is like almost the opposite of the general uh, lower quality transistor amplifier. So 
and 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 yeah that creates a sort of a, a soup like effect uh, lacking attack and precision and also it, it also sounds just often too conservative so bad gear just generally has a sound that that it's built in a cheap way or it either is thin or warm or have some kind of digital mid ground where they were trying to uh, not make it too warm not make it too thin and that and that creates this like break effect on the music and uh, in one of the, my other uh, videos you can actually see how i rank most of the gear out on uh, on the market and this is not a sponsored uh, test this is done by myself using thousands of hours going through most of the gear on the market and you'd be surprised uh, how many of the big brands just don't make it on 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 that list i mean the a lot of the big brands that most people think are some of the best gear in the world they're actually not that good and uh, you'd be surprised some of the the big contenders on that list so just to wrap it up if you want some proper if you want to like try and and, and get a feel for what's proper uh starting to go up in the in, in the top transistor gear then you have to try uh, yba abyss sound negra spectral and griffin and i mean these these brands obviously make some really crazy expensive gear so um just 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 try it you know it could be that it's too expensive for you and you have to settle with something uh, less good like a hegel amplifier or a macintosh amplifier or pass labs or mark levinson you know fine start with that that's also you know pretty decent uh, equipment to start with you know and um definitely uh, try that so that was all for today and uh, i hope you guys will in enjoy and perhaps share your own experiences that you've had with your own gear so this is me logging out real hi-fi help <laughs>